Detroit Diesel 6V71 was built to power everything from buses to boats with unmatched reliability. But its two-stroke roar came with a problem no one could ignore. And when new environmental laws arrived, that problem grew impossible to hide. This is the story of how America's most trusted engine was forced into extinction by the very traits that made it great. In 1938, when General Motors launched the Detroit Diesel Division, they weren't just building another engine. They were creating what would become one of the most recognizable power plants in industrial history. The Series 71 family, named for their 71 cubic inches of displacement per cylinder, represented a revolutionary approach to diesel engineering that would dominate heavy-duty applications for the next half century. The 6 V71, with its V6 configuration and compact 426 cubic inch displacement, emerged as the perfect sweet spot between power and packaging. Unlike the massive 12 V71 and 16 V71 monsters that powered locomotives and ships, the 6 V71 could fit into tight spaces while still delivering between 200 and 350 horsepower depending on configuration. This made it the go-to choice for city buses, fire trucks, marine vessels, and even military applications. What made this engine truly special wasn't just its power output, but its fundamental design philosophy. Detroit Diesel chose a two-stroke cycle, meaning the engine fired on every revolution of the crankshaft rather than every other revolution like conventional four-stroke engines. This delivered more power strokes per minute, resulting in exceptional torque characteristics that made heavy vehicles leap forward with surprising authority. The engineering was elegantly simple yet brutally effective. The Roots-type supercharger, often called a blower, forces fresh air into the cylinders while simultaneously expelling exhaust gases through ports in the cylinder walls. No intake or exhaust valves were needed, just precisely timed port openings that allowed the engine to breathe. Turbocharged variants added even more boost pressure, pushing power outputs well beyond what seemed possible from such a compact package. Throughout the 1940s, 50s, and 60s, the Detroit 6 Phi 71 became synonymous with American industrial might. During World War II, these engines powered countless military vehicles and landing craft, proving their reliability under the most demanding conditions imaginable. Mechanics loved them because they could be rebuilt with basic tools in field conditions. Fleet operators loved them because they ran virtually forever with minimal maintenance. The distinctive sound became part of America's industrial soundtrack. That unmistakable high-pitched whine, rising to a crescendo under load, announced the presence of a Detroit diesel from miles away. Bus passengers knew that sound meant they were riding behind serious power. Marine operators recognized it as the heartbeat of commercial shipping. Even today, decades after most have been retired, enthusiasts can instantly identify a running Detroit 6V71 by sound alone. But there was another characteristic that made these engines instantly recognizable, one that would eventually spell their doom. When a 6V71 was working hard, it produced dramatic plumes of black smoke that billowed from exhaust stacks like industrial thunderclouds. For decades, this was simply accepted as the nature of powerful diesel engines. Black smoke meant hard work, and hard work was what America was all about. But wait, why did two-stroke diesels smoke so much more than four-stroke engines? Wasn't Detroit Diesel aware this was a problem? The answer lies in the fundamental physics of two-stroke operation. In a conventional four-stroke diesel, the piston has four distinct movements, intake, compression, power, and exhaust. This allows time for complete fuel combustion and thorough exhaust gas evacuation. But in a two-stroke engine, all of this happens in just two piston movements, creating a much more chaotic combustion environment. During the scavenging process, fresh air rushed in through intake ports while exhaust gases escaped through exhaust ports, all happening simultaneously. This overlap meant that some fresh fuel-air mixture inevitably escaped with the exhaust before it could burn completely. The result was unburned hydrocarbons and particulate matter that manifested as visible black smoke. Detroit diesel engineers were absolutely aware of this characteristic, but for most of the engine's operational life, 
emissions simply weren't a priority. The focus was on reliability, power, and serviceability. Black smoke was seen as a sign of an engine working hard, not as environmental pollution. Fleet operators actually preferred the visual feedback because it told them their engines were receiving adequate fuel under load. The two-stroke design also required oil injection into the scavenging air charge to lubricate the cylinder walls and ports. This oil burned along with the diesel fuel, adding to the particulate emissions and creating that characteristic blue-black smoke plume under acceleration. Oil consumption rates reached up to 2% by volume, meaning a 6V71 burning 20 gallons of fuel per hour might consume nearly half a gallon of oil in the same period. By the 1970s, America was experiencing an environmental awakening. The Clean Air Act of 1970 established the Environmental Protection Agency and began the process of regulating industrial emissions that had previously been ignored. Urban areas, particularly those with heavy bus fleets, were experiencing air quality problems that could no longer be overlooked. Cities like Los Angeles, New York, and Chicago had thousands of buses powered by Detroit diesel engines, each one contributing to a growing haze of particulate matter that hung over downtown areas like an industrial fog. School districts operated fleets of buses that filled with smoke every time the driver accelerated, exposing children to diesel exhaust on a daily basis. Environmental health studies began linking diesel particulate matter to respiratory problems, particularly in urban communities. The technical challenges facing Detroit 6571 engines became apparent as emission testing protocols developed. Unlike four-stroke engines, which could be tuned for cleaner combustion through timing adjustments and electronic controls, the two-stroke cycle was inherently limited in its ability to reduce emissions. The fundamental design that made these engines powerful and reliable also made them incapable of meeting increasingly strict environmental standards. Federal diesel emission standards introduced in the 1980s and 1990s mandated dramatic reductions in particulate matter and nitrogen oxides. The 6V71, with its specific fuel consumption of 0.45 to 0.55 pounds per horsepower hour, was significantly less efficient than contemporary four-stroke engines. More importantly, its NOx emissions ran hot due to the continuous combustion cycle, producing levels that were simply incompatible with new regulations. As regulations tightened, Detroit diesel and fleet operators desperately searched for solutions that would allow these proven workhorses to continue serving. Particulate traps, also known as diesel particulate filters, were developed to capture the black smoke before it reached the atmosphere. These early systems worked by collecting soot in ceramic filters that would periodically regenerate by burning off accumulated particles. However, retrofitting DPF systems to 6V71 engines proved nearly impossible. The air-cooled engine block left no space for the bulky after-treatment equipment. The oil-laden exhaust quickly clogged filters and intercoolers, creating maintenance nightmares that far exceeded the original engine's service requirements. Turbochargers fouled with oil residue, mufflers became blocked with soot, and the entire exhaust system required constant attention. Electronic fuel injection systems were developed to provide more precise fuel metering, but the fundamental two-stroke scavenging process still resulted in fuel washdown of cylinder liners and incomplete combustion. Selective catalytic reduction systems, which could dramatically reduce NOx emissions in four-stroke engines, were incompatible with the oil-contaminated exhaust stream from two-stroke Detroit diesels. The economic reality became stark. Retrofit costs often exceeded the value of the engines themselves, while providing only marginal emission improvements that still fell far short of regulatory requirements. Fleet operators faced a choice between expensive retrofits that didn't fully solve the problem or complete engine replacement with modern four-stroke units. The EPA's Tier 1 Marine and Stationary Diesel Standards, implemented in 1994, marked the beginning of the end for the 6V71 in regulated applications. These standards required dramatic reductions in particulate matter and NOx emissions that two-stroke engines simply couldn't achieve without prohibitively expensive after-treatment systems. 
But if these engines were so problematic, why didn't Detroit Diesel just redesign them to meet emission standards? Couldn't they have developed a cleaner two-stroke design? Detroit Diesel actually tried exactly that. They invested millions of dollars in research and development, attempting to create cleaner two-stroke engines. Advanced electronic fuel injection, variable port timing, and sophisticated exhaust gas recirculation systems were all explored. But the fundamental physics of two-stroke operation worked against every attempted solution. The company's engineering teams discovered that truly clean two-stroke operation would require such extensive modifications that the resulting engine would lose all the advantages that made the original design attractive. The simplicity would be gone, replaced by complex electronic systems. The reliability would be compromised by sensitive emissions equipment. The cost would skyrocket beyond what the market would accept. By the early 1990s, Detroit Diesel made the strategic decision to abandon two-stroke development entirely and focus on four-stroke engines that could more easily meet future emission standards. The legendary Series 71 family, including the 6V71, was effectively sentenced to death by corporate boardroom decision. The Tier 2 standards implemented in 2004 delivered the final blow. These regulations banned non-filtered two-stroke diesel engines above 130 kilowatts in marine and stationary applications. The International Maritime Organization's MARPOL Annex 6 regulations impose similar NOx limits on marine engines worldwide, effectively ending the 6V71's career in commercial shipping. The transition away from Detroit 6571 engines happened with surprising speed once regulatory pressure mounted. Transit agencies that had operated Detroit diesel fleets for decades suddenly found themselves shopping for completely different power plants. The familiar sound of two-stroke engines disappeared from city streets, replaced by the quieter operation of four-stroke units equipped with sophisticated emission controls. Marine operators faced particularly difficult decisions. Many vessels had been designed around the compact dimensions and mounting patterns of six V71 engines. Repowering with four-stroke engines often required significant structural modifications, new engine mounts, different cooling systems, and updated exhaust routing. The cost of conversion frequently exceeded the value of older vessels, leading to premature scrapping of otherwise serviceable boats. School districts experienced perhaps the most dramatic transition. Fleets of buses that had faithfully served students for decades were suddenly non-compliant with local air quality regulations. The iconic yellow school bus, traditionally powered by Detroit diesel engines, was transformed almost overnight as districts rushed to purchase cleaner four-stroke powered replacements. The maintenance culture surrounding these engines also disappeared. Mechanics who had built their careers on Detroit diesel expertise found their skills obsolete as fleets converted to electronically controlled four-stroke engines. The simple mechanical nature of the 6V71 that had made it so appealing to operators became a liability in an increasingly computerized world. Here's where the story takes an unexpected turn. While environmental regulations killed the Detroit 6V71 in mainstream applications, they also created an underground market that has kept these engines alive in ways Detroit Diesel never anticipated. The same characteristics that made them environmental pariahs, their simplicity, durability, and mechanical reliability made them incredibly valuable in unregulated applications. Export markets became a lifeline for retired 6V71 engines. Countries with less stringent environmental regulations welcomed these proven power plants with open arms. Marine applications in international waters remained largely exempt from emission standards, allowing commercial fishing vessels and offshore workboats to continue operating 6V71 engines long after they disappeared from domestic fleets. The collector and enthusiast market discovered these engines as well. Classic bus restoration projects, vintage marine applications, and off-road equipment builds have created a thriving aftermarket for 6V71 engines and parts. Enthusiasts prize these engines precisely because they represent a bygone era of mechanical simplicity and raw power, uncomplicated by electronic controls and emission systems. Ironically, some of the most pristine 6V71 engines available today 
are those that were removed from service not because they were worn out, but because they became regulatory non-compliant. Fleet operators often removed low-hour engines in perfect mechanical condition, creating a secondary market of barely used power plants that have found new life in unregulated applications. The environmental impact of Detroit 6 V71 retirement extends beyond simple emission reductions. Scrapping thousands of serviceable engines created an enormous waste stream of cast iron, steel, and aluminum that required energy-intensive recycling processes. Many engines were exported to developing countries where they continue operating without emission controls, simply shifting the pollution burden rather than eliminating it. The replacement four-stroke engines, while cleaner in operation, required sophisticated manufacturing processes and rare earth materials for their electronic control systems and emission equipment. The full life cycle environmental impact of this transition has never been thoroughly analyzed, though it's clear that the immediate air quality benefits in urban areas were substantial. Studies conducted in cities with large bus fleets showed measurable improvements in particulate matter concentrations following the retirement of two-stroke diesel fleets. Children riding school buses experienced dramatically reduced exposure to diesel exhaust, while urban residents benefited from cleaner air in downtown areas where buses congregated. Today, more than two decades after the last Detroit 6 V71 engines were banned from new installations, their cultural impact remains profound. The sound of a running 6 V71 still draws crowds at vintage equipment shows and marine festivals. Enthusiasts travel hundreds of miles to hear these engines run, documenting their operation for future generations who may never experience the era of industrial two-stroke power. The engineering lessons learned from the 6 V71's environmental downfall influenced an entire generation of engine designers. Modern four-stroke engines incorporate sophisticated emission controls from the initial design phase rather than attempting to retrofit older concepts. The regulatory framework developed to address diesel emissions has become a model for environmental standards worldwide. Maintenance practices developed for Detroit 6 V71 engines influenced heavy-duty service procedures that remain relevant today. The modular design philosophy, easily replaceable wear components, and accessible service points established expectations for industrial equipment that persist in modern machinery design. The Detroit Diesel 6 V71 represents a fascinating case study in how technological solutions that were perfectly appropriate for their era can become completely obsolete due to changing social priorities. An engine that was celebrated for decades as the pinnacle of reliability and power became an environmental villain almost overnight. Not because its design changed, but because society's understanding of air quality and public health evolved. The Detroit Diesel 6 V71 didn't just disappear because it was old or unreliable. It vanished because the world changed around it, and the very characteristics that made it legendary became unacceptable in a new era of environmental consciousness. The two-stroke diesel that once symbolized American industrial might became a casualty of progress, drowning not in water, but in its own smoke and the regulations designed to clear the air. But in our rush toward cleaner technology, have we lost something valuable about mechanical simplicity and user serviceability? These old Detroit diesels could be rebuilt by any decent mechanic with basic tools, while modern engines require sophisticated diagnostic equipment and specialized training. Are we trading long-term sustainability for short-term emission reductions? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And if you found this deep dive into diesel history as fascinating as I did researching it, smash that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Trust me, you don't want to miss our next exploration into the engines that shaped America. Until next time.